tasks with due dates in Ocean, something that requires advanced calculations behind the scene. So, we've looked at simple tasks. Maybe you feel like you've mastered them. Let's move on to something more exciting. Due dates, calendar and calculations of dates. I've started by copying our well-known tasks database to one that includes due dates. Or, well, it doesn't yet, but let's include that. So we add a date field. We set the date format to relative and time format to 24 hours for easy readability, at least here in Europe. We start populating the date fields and uh, we start a bit in the past. That would signify an overdue task if that was the due date and it's not completed. And we then move on. Something we'll see as we move along is that the date calculations in Notion are actually a little bit peculiar, but we'll look at ways to overcome those limitations. All right, so as you can see, we're adding some dates. We start from last Thursday, we move to yesterday, today, tomorrow, and we also add one for Christmas Eve. And the last one actually doesn't have a due date at all, something we need to consider when coding this. So just for clarity here, the time right now is 3 p.m., meaning it's between 10 in the morning and 11 at night, or 23 at it, as it's listed here. So now that we have our due dates, let's create a new column, a new property. We set that to the formula type, meaning that we can make calculated values and we call it due in days. We use the date between function to calculate the number of days between the due date and now. As you can see, we get values from minus three, signifying it's overdue by three days, to today, which is zero, and tomorrow, which is one, and Christmas Eve, which happens to be 40 days in the future. The peculiar thing with Notion is that it actually takes quite a large span that it calls zero, as in the same day as today. So everything from today at midnight, which is roughly 15 hours ago, to even tomorrow, tomorrow at midnight, but once it passes the 24-hour window, so tomorrow at 11 p.m. at night, we actually see one as one day ahead. So to fix this, we need to change the calculation column to calculate hours instead of days, which is a more accurate way of looking at this. We rename the column to due in hours, and we adjust the formula to reflect that change. We now see that the values on each row is what we expect them to be, we can see that we have minus values for overdue things and plus values for things in the future, which is great. The, um, the thing that still is a little bit strange here is that if you look at yesterday and today and tomorrow, the ones without a date, we only set the date when we set the due times and Notion actually assumes we mean midnight. Well, when I set a task due for today, I very rarely mean midnight. I actually normally think that I have the entire day to do it. So we need to pick up this in some way, and there isn't actually a good way in Notion to um, see if a date is a date plus time or if it's a date only. As far as I can see, there's no property you're able to pick up using these types of formulas. So we do a little workaround. We uh, look at the formatted date and we format the hours in, with a 24 hour clock and minutes we check if the hours and minutes actually format to 00, zero colon zero, 00, which they do at midnight. So for all these dates where the due date is set as a date only and, as a, and without a time, we can pick that up. And we can then adjust the due date or due time. And then we can have an adjusted due date by pushing all these dates to the next midnight. So if I write today, I basically mean today, one mi minute before midnight, the upcoming midnight. So today at 23.59. So we push all these dates by 24 hours. That gets us the right value. And for good measure, let's rename this calculated column to overdue after to make it a bit more clear what we're talking about. And as you can see, all the values that had a time are unchanged, and the values that only had a date have been pushed to the next midnight, meaning that we have the entire day to finish our tasks before they turn overdue. All right, now that we have our due time in hours figured out, and we also created the 
overdue after property, where we take into account this peculiarity with the dates and midnight, we're ready to create our overdue column. So we create a new formula column, we edit formula, and here we want to check if the current date and time is after the due date, then it's overdue. If it's in the range of the due date, then we will say it's due, so we basically have 24 hours to complete it before it becomes overdue. If it's close to the due date, meaning that the due date is within 24 hours from now, or if we have plenty of time to complete it, and then we'll just leave this value blank. So we check if due in hours is less than zero, meaning we have a negative value, so it's overdue. We check if it's less than 24, meaning it's less than 24 hours until its due date, then we say it's due. And lastly, we just leave it blank. So this is working as expected with regards to the time calculation. But as you can see, we haven't taken into account the completed column. So even if we have completed a task, it's listed as overdue. Let's fix that. We go into the formula and we want to take into account the completed column for the completed property. We add an if statement. This time we use a normal if function and we return done if it's completed and otherwise we return the overdue, due or empty. So now you can see that all the checked items, the ones that are completed, are shown as done and all the ones that are unchecked have their overdue value of either due, overdue or simply blank for pending. Now we created the database. How do we actually use it? What we want to do, as per usual, is to create a page for our view. We'll use a board view, similar to before, but I think you'll find it much more useful now that we have separated the data in a good way. Now we can group, meaning make columns from the due status. So we have one column for overdue, one for due, and one for no due date. And then we hide the done items. After showing the complete checkboxes, we can actually both move things around and we can also click the complete checkbox to complete things and move them to the done state. As you remember from the calculation, whenever we click the complete, they move to the done state, which here is hidden, meaning it becomes similar to our archive that we did in one of the first episodes. I'll link that above. Thank you for joining and I hope to see you tomorrow. Don't forget to comment and subscribe. Have a nice day.